Matthew chapter 12, verses 38. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Now they are challenging Jesus. They are saying, Hey, listen, Jesus, you have been preaching. Eh? You have been telling us you are from heaven. Give us a sign. Verse 39. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. An evil and a generation of adultery. You seek what? A sign. And no sign will be given to you except the sign of prophet Jonah. Verse 40, please. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Well, in the heart of the earth. What does that mean? In the heart of the earth. Where did Jesus go after he died? He did not go to heaven. His spirit. Now, this is something that uh, you need to understand as you continue studying the Bible. In the Old Testament, when people would die, they would not go to heaven. When people would die, they would go to a place called paradise. That is why Jesus gave the example of the rich man and who? And the, and the poor man Lazarus. Yeah, and then when he was dying at the cross, when the thief repented, he said, Tonight, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Where was paradise and heads? So in the Old Testament, if you died, either you'll go to paradise or you'll go where? To heads. And as per the story of Jesus, when somebody was in heads, he could see what? Paradise. And the people in paradise could see where? Heads. But there was a wall in between. That is why the rich man is begging Lazarus and Abraham, please help me. I'm in torment. So when Jesus died, he says, I will go to the heart of the earth. So assumptions are those who study the Bible and those who are theologians. Most of us believe heads and paradise was, was at the center of the earth. That is where souls will go. Because the Bible says, I will be at the heart of the earth. So meaning, when Jesus died, the Bible says, he went and took the keys. Is it not written? Keys of heads. And he went where? That is where he went to preach to the souls. And the Bible says when he was resurrected, some of the people who had died were seen in Jerusalem with Jesus. And they ascended to heaven. Okay, they were seen some of the people who had died long time ago. So nowadays, what remains is heads and heaven. So if you are a born again Christian, you don't go to heads, you go to heaven now. Because now the Bible says in the end, back in the days, the blood of goats could cover your sins, but it could not remove your sins. But now the blood of Jesus removes, cleanses you from your sins. So if a believer dies, they go to heaven, up. But if a person who does not believe in God dies, they don't go to heaven. They go to heads. Are we clear on that now? So Jesus says here that the sign that I will give you is a sign of Jonah. He stayed in the fish for three days. And I'm also going to die and resurrect after three days. But I want you to understand that Jesus said, you, a generation of what? Adultery. A generation of evil. So a generation can arise. A family can have a problem of evil, can have a problem of adultery, as the Bible says. Look at the book of Isaiah 57, verse 3. So there are some things that, so that, so that we don't die spiritually. Because I don't want you to lose the theme of the verse. Where the Bible says you seem to have what? A name to be alive but you are dead. You are dead spiritually. You are dead. You are not. You are not. You are not alive. Because there are three types of deaths. Number one there is what we call physical death. The physical death of the body. The body dies. Number two there is what we call what? Eternal death. Eternal death is when somebody dies without having Christ in their lives, without accepting Jesus, 
into their lives. That is eternal death. They will never be redeemed again. It is done and it is done forever. So if somebody dies without repenting, I remember there was a day I went to a man who was about to die. And I requested him. I was preaching to him in St. Mary's Hospital in Nairobi. And I was preaching to him. He's a man I knew. And I'm telling him, Can you, can't you give your life to Jesus? And you know what he told me? Ah, no, I'm not going to do that. Let me first get out of this bo bed of sickness. I don't want to give this body to your Jesus when it is beaten down, when it is sick. Let it... Let me recover. When I recover, I, I, you come and preach to me. I will give my life to Jesus. The next, the same same day in the in the night, he died. So he refused completely to accept Jesus as his personal savior. That is what we call eternal death. I remember when I was in Kenyatta Hospital. I, I normally give you that story uh, after I got an injury, a very bad injury. And I stayed in Kenyatta Hospital 6D, Ward 6D. And uh, I had my friend who had an accident next to my bed. And I tried to preach to him. I tried to talk to him about the gospel, about Jesus. And he refused. And he's, he, had, he had broken his spinal cord. Imagine somebody is so much in pain, broken from the neck down, only the head is functioning. And yet they cannot give their life to Jesus because they are, they are, their soul has been darkened. You know, they have been given over. They have given, they have sold their soul to the devil. I try to speak to this man every day because I will lead all of us. We could not get out of the bed, but I will lead prayers in the morning. I still have photos of some of those people, you know, but you will see he's, he's like this. He can't even sing. When we say amen, he can't say amen. And one night he died. Yeah, that is what we call eternal death. In the whole room, he's the first to die. He died. There are some people who died, but some, some of the other people there gave their lives to Jesus. But this one, even you know the preachers who come to hospital to preach, they will come and preach to us. They will ask each and the pastor will ask each, each person, are you born again? Would you like... He would say, no, I'm not born again and I don't want to get born again. He died in sin. He died eternally. There is no remedy for him. He is gone and gone forever. And he will never get a chance again for the gospel. Because he had the gospel, but he refused. He sold his soul to the devil. He sold his life to the devil. And that is why I say, no matter what you're going through, don't sell your soul to the devil. Don't bow to Satan. If you're a youth here, you, you're listening to me. I, I was listening to another young man who was talking about how nowadays you are given money. He was talking about how he was given six million. He's a graduate of university in Nairobi. But what they are doing to you, these devil worshippers and agents, they call you to donate blood. Yeah, they have rooms. It is not donating blood for hospital. They literally remove, you know the way you, you donate blood? They remove your blood and they pay you. Six million, three million. And then the condition, he was talking about, the condition was you have to use that money maybe in 21 days. The money has to be over. You have to use that money. You cannot save the money. You have to use it. And you don't use it in some assets. You use it in party. Live a life you want. He was given six million. He donated blood. One liter of blood. Is it usually one pint? Is this one pint, not one liter? One, I don't know if it is one liter. And the, what, he, he did not know. They, they, they looked like priests. They would wear some funny, funny gowns. They would be in a certain altar. And he didn't care because after you donate for 30 minutes and you leave the blood to them, they give you the money. You are given cash. Go. What they do with the blood, he said he doesn't know. So in 21 days, he was saying how he has gone to seashells. He goes to Zanzibar with the money. Goes to Mombasa, party after party. After 21 days, the money is over. Then he's broke. 
he stays for another two months again he says ah i'm going to that place again then he goes and they they, they don't have a problem donate blood they remove that time they gave him three million and they gave him still the same condition. You have to use this money before one month ends. That's why you see some people have a lot of money. Spending without worrying where they got it from. It is not hard work. It is bowing to the devil. You may ask me where, where the blood goes. I don't know. But definitely they use it for their own rituals. Right? So the young man one day decided I'm going to stop this. And he went to church and he was prayed for. So these things are there. Don't bow. Don't sell your soul to the devil. Now somebody may, may argue and say, ah, that is not possible. You remember Jesus when he was fasting? The devil came and said, bow to me and I'll give you the glory. Take time to grow. Most people don't want the process of growth. There is sacrifice in growing. Praise the Lord. Look at us. We are in this city. We still are renting a hall. It is a process of what? Growth. God wants you to grow. There are principles he put on this earth that will help you to succeed. And one of those principles is working. You have to work and to labor for you to increase. But there are people who don't want to work, to get tired. They want the easy way. I will donate blood. I will give blood. I will donate it to demons. And then I will get money. But eventually they will kill you. How long will you continue doing that? Praise the Lord. So sometimes you may come from a family that has a certain culture. A culture of a certain sin. There are things that are done in your family. And unconsciously you do those things without knowing you are doing them. Praise the Lord. If you come from a family that drinks alcohol. You know your uncles and everybody is drinking alcohol. If you are not careful, you may take the same path. Whenever I meet somebody who is a drunkard, I ask them, who was drinking in your family? Mostly it's their father or their uncle or their cousins. They learned it from those three people. The father, the uncles, or the cousins. You see a woman drinking. It is in the, in the family. There was a problem of alcohol. You see a woman who is immoral. Those things were opened up. There was a door that was opened up. Do you know when you live in sin for so long, you think all of us are like you? Yeah, that is true. Some of the things you do, you may think everybody around you, it's only that they are, you, you are open, them they are not. I would like to say to somebody who is watching, what you are doing, we don't do. It's you who is doing. And stop putting us in your basket. Some of those things you are doing, it's you and you alone. You know, they are, ah, this world, there is no genuine pastor. All oh, these pastors, hey, ah, this world, there is no. Men, men are men. Do you know Adam, when he was created by God, he became lonely. You know, when the Bible talks about he became lonely, historians say, and those who study the Bible, they don't say he became lonely after two weeks. It's 30 years. He stayed alone for 30 years, alone. Yeah, roaming around, eating fruits. Alone. And I told you, Minister Okello, Adam was not a short man. Adam was a 14 feet man. A tall man walking in the, in the trees. The historians and the, those who study the Bible say he stayed alone for how many years? Almost 30. And some even think it was more than that. Some think even he stayed for 60 years. Roaming around alone. And the Bible says he became very lonely very lonely very lonely to a point heaven said let's create somebody for him and that is how the woman was created so men if there were no women here we will be so lonely very we'll be fighting and killing each other left right and again how will we be born how because a man cannot give birth so women are good don't allow some 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 demonic charged man on social media destroy your image about women yeah, everywhere hey women are the ones that are bringing trouble women hey women women what you should love women not love love in a bad way but we should appreciate their efforts in our lives 
And the moment you have that kind of appreciating women, you'll appreciate your wife. You'll not mistreat your sisters. You will honor the women around you. Amen. If you, you listen to that man, you will dishonor women around. Wherever you go to working places, you will despise them. You meet a woman somewhere, you'll despise them. So you may be born in a family that has a culture of sin. Let me give you two more verses and then we pray. Isaiah chapter 57 verses 3. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 3. Can we read together? One, two, go. But come here you sons of sorceries. You offsprings of, offspring of adulterer and the harlot. So look at that. Sons of sorcerers. So you are born in a family that has a certain sin. And the Bible says, come here you sons of what? Sorcerers. So we should not be ignorant of the sins of the family. Because these were sons of people who would, come, who would engage in sorcery. They would expose their children to sorcery. Praise the Lord. They, they, will, they will expose their children to adultery and halotry. Their women will go and get money through halotry. So those young girls are raised in such kind of an environment. They are raised in an environment of adultery. They are raised in an environment of sorcery. So the sin will trickle down to these children. That is why they are being called by God. Come here you, sons of what? Sorcerers, you offspring of adultery and Halotry. So, family sin should not be ignored. Look at verse 4. Family sin can cause you to die spiritually. The Bible says you have a name to be alive, but you are dead. So, what kills somebody spiritually? Some of these things I'm talking about. Family sin. Whom do you ridicule? Against whom do you make a wide mouth and stick out your tongue? Are you not the children of transgression, offsprings of falsehood? Now you can write that right there. Some of the family, some of the family, family sins. You are offsprings of what? Transgression. Transgressions are people who plan for a sin and they commit it. They know it's a wrong and they go ahead and do it. Offsprings of falsehood. You have been raised by families that speak lies. And they are full of falsehood. So you may come from a family that speaks lies. And even now you lie to us. For no reason. Do you know there are people who lie for no reason? Yeah, they lie for no reason. It's not that there is anything they are gaining. They were born that way. And they are in a family that lies. Now imagine such a person becomes a pastor. And he was born in a family of people who lie. Hey, he gives you stories. You know, you know, I looked at somebody on the internet lying to the congregation that he walks in the air. That at night he walks in the air. And he was lying, lying to his congregation. And he said he's going to bring a video to show them that at night he walks in the air. And he made a video, literally a video of him walking. He was walking down the stairs. And then eventually he walked in the air. And there you could see the, the legs are in the air. But after some experts looking at the video, it was a lie. Yeah, they, they gave him a stick. You know, the camera was not, the moment they took him now, as he was coming down, they took the whole body. But later they started now focusing on the feet. And that is where the stick came in. And two people carried him. And he walked, he walked. And then eventually they would run. You could hear them open the door and, and close the door. And then the camera after the, he came down, came, came down. Now they, all, they, they, they took the camera around. But you could hear from the background, the guy is running. And he's full of lies. Full of lies. That's why they are called false prophets. They were born in families that have falsehood. They're even lying to the congregation. And the congregation believed. Oh, our pastor walks in the air. Oh. <laughs> hey, dunia. 
Ndiyo naona Mungu anakataa kuleta miujiza ingine maana. Wanadamu tumeiharibu. Nyinyi mnaonaje? Mhubiri hmm? mmoja alivukisha mtu mtu wako na ulemavu barabara. Alafu anasema ameponya kiwete. You know? Arabi kuna mubiri ya liniambia mefufua watu kadhaa Nika muuliza wako hapi. Mi wajumi natanga kusema ukweli. Let's be honest. Hawa watu mefufua kumi na kitu. Where are they? Angarao bonke tunaona. Mutu uli alifufua. Tunamujua. Alifufuka kwa kuruzedi yake. Na sahia na peananga testimony. I was dead. Kini ingine ya kusema. Nilifufua mtu. Unataja mahali ya tuwezi enda. Tilienda wajil Kula kwa boda Kwanini hawa fufukangi na kuru wanafufuka wajil Am I saying watu waezi fufuka? Wanaweza But what I'm saying, let's be honest If somebody has Kama mutu walikuwa amezimia muka muombea Haka muka museme alikuwa amezimia Si alikuwa mekufa Let's be honest with each other Is it possible to raise people from the dead? Yes but it is God who raises people from the dead. And if, if, if he doesn't use me to do it, I shouldn't brag and lie. I should be honest and say, I have never raised anybody from the dead. You know, there was a man who was very innocent and very honest, Billy Graham. He said, I have preached for all these years, but I have never spoken in tongues. I have never spoken in tongues. And he told, he was being interviewed. He said, I have never spoken in tongues yet i have preached to so many people they have come to to christ i don't know why god did not give me the gift of speaking in and he died without speaking in tongues that is he lesser no so what i'm trying to say don't don't try even to fake tongues <laughs> okay You don't have, you don't have to do that. Haba ula tusikiza hapo, unasikia moja mesema Rika Daba, na yula mesema Prokota. Na yula mesema Rika Baga Prokota. You know, you don't have. If the gift of tongue comes, well and good. Yeah, and if you you tally without getting it, you are still a child of God. Don't fake things. Hey, amen. Na na ongeleja pia wala wabiri uwa mnajifanya mnalia na hamburi. Ni mpakalini, ni mpakalini mungu. Ha Akura, akura kulia unalia Ati ndiyo watu waanze kulia kwa kaa Eee <tos> Eee ulituwa chiri ya mungu <tos> Akisimama na sema Kira pepo unaona tena macho Haya Kumbe likuwa hali May we overcome the culture of sin in our family Whatever you found in your family will not affect you. We declare, may the goodness of the Lord rest upon us. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to lift up your hands and to pray. Oh God, deliver me from the family sin. You, you, may, you may come from a lineage of transgression. You may come from a lineage of falsehood. You may come from a lineage of adultery. You may come from a lineage of evil. You may come from a lineage. We have read a couple of things there. Can you lift up your hands and you declare, Oh God, whatever I found in my family, the culture that I found in my family, the culture of sorcery and witchcraft that I found in my family, I will not walk in that path. I will not walk in the path of my great uh, my ancestors. I will not walk in the path of those who gave birth to me. Oh, some were born in families where they will ridicule God. They will mock God. Father, we pray that you may forgive us if we were born from such families that will open their tongue and ridicule and mock God. For, forgive us, my Father. Some of us may have been born in families that have transgression.
Some may, may have been born from families that have falsehood. Father, we pray that you may forgive us any culture of sin that we found in our family. Lord, we repent in the name of Jesus. Somebody take a minute and tell God, I will not walk in the, in the ways of my ancestors. I will not walk in the ways of my fathers. I will not walk in the, in the culture of their sin. Whatever they did, we are changing in our generation. That is in our family. We overcome the culture, the culture of falsehood that is in our family. Oh God, we ask for Jesus' culture. Can you lift up your hands and tell God, may I live in the culture of Jesus? Today, I believe and walk in the culture of Christ. The culture of Jesus, the culture of Christ. The culture of Jesus, the culture of Christ. I walk in the ways of God. I walk in the ways of God. The culture of Christ, the culture of Jesus. Father, we lift up our hands and we declare in the name of Jesus, we walk in the culture of Christ. We walk in the culture of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We will not walk in the culture of sorcery. We will not walk in the culture of seeking help from diviners and false prophets. We will walk in the culture of Christ, the culture of Jesus, the culture of the word of God. This morning we dedicate our body, our lives unto you, so that we may not look like we are alive, yet we are dead spiritually. We refuse spiritual, spiritual death. We, oh God, guard us from the spiritual death in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we may develop the culture of being alive. I am alive in Christ Jesus. I'm alive in Jesus' name. I'm alive in Christ Jesus. Alive in Christ. Yes, in the name of Jesus. May I walk in, in the life of Christ. The life of Christ. The life of Christ. Oh God, prayer life will be back. I will be a prayerful person. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we love you. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You shall be alive in Christ. I say there are three types of death. Number one, physical death. Eternal death and spiritual death. May God deliver you from all those deaths. Amen. May you be a centenarian. A centenarian is somebody who hits a hundred. May you be a centenarian. Can you believe you can hit 100 years? Yeah, live long and enjoy life in Jesus' name. And then eternal death is not our portion. We shall be in Christ forever and ever. And then finally spiritual death. We will not die spiritually. We shall remain alive. Praise the Lord. So I want us to give our offerings for those who are watching through the TV. And also you are watching um, through our social media. I want to pray for your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for each and every person who, are following, who was following us this morning. We dedicate the offering that they have given unto you. We sanctify it for the work of ministry. And we speak favor and blessings upon each and every person as we give our offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as you give your offering, maybe you are there, you want to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of every sin and mistake that I have committed. Sanctify me and make me new. Write my name in the book of life and fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. Amen. Maybe you are sick there in the hospital. You are having some troubles in life. Can we believe together for your healing? Can we lift up our hands for those who are watching in hospital and we declare they recover? Whoever that is in a certain hospital, can we pray? For one minute. Father, we pray for those who are sick in hospital. Some are, some are at the point of giving up. Father, we lift up our hands and uh, we speak total healing and recovery. Mutioyote na tutazama akiwa kwenye kitanda. Anyone who is sick, anyone who is watching us and is not feeling well. Today we declare, be free from that sickness and that disease. In the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for those who are in prison. Father, we pray as they are there, may they give their lives to you. May they know you more. Those who are in prison, we bless you. And those who are sick who are in prison, we declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we speak hope in the mighty name of Jesus. For that young man who feels like committing suicide, for that person who is at the end of his life or her life, 
Father, we pray for hope in the name of Jesus and we declare receive your miracle wherever you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give your offering. If you like to come to our church, we welcome you at Chosen Generation Church City Center. We are next to Equity Bank above Shout Fitters in Nakuru. We welcome you. Our, our service is from, we end at 11.30. We say that because the, the 30 minutes are usually for prayer and closing the church. So you're welcome to fellowship with us here. If you like to come to our main church, we are also at Barnabas, opposite Ruby's petrol station, on your way to Luna Hotel. You're welcome and God bless you for giving your offering.